Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, while many people were interested in the Falcon Heavy launch, another record-breaking launch happened over the weekend that nobody seemed to notice. On the 3rd of February, the smallest rocket to make it into orbit was launched. There's the Falcon Heavy on the left, and on the right, that tiny thing is the SS-520. And that, over the weekend, was able to launch a 4kg CubeSat into low Earth orbit, making it the smallest, lightest launch vehicle ever to attain orbit. This thing is absolutely tiny when you compare it to the Falcon 9. It's less than 10 metres tall, so in theory it could actually fit inside the fairing of the Falcon Heavy. And the mass of 2.6 tonnes is well within the capabilities of the Falcon. It could go basically anywhere in the solar system and then still have power left over to fire its engines. Now, obviously, this thing isn't nearly as powerful as the Falcon Heavy, which has 27 Merlin engines. This, on the other hand, has a single solid rocket motor, but it is pushing something which is lighter than some cars. So you can see it accelerating away from the launch pad way faster than that Falcon Heavy. And because it's so small, of course, it just disappears into the distance very quickly. This was launched on February 3rd from the Ushinora Space Center in Japan. And uh, yeah, the first stage fires for about 30 seconds, accelerating at over 6G. It speeds up to about 2 kilometers per second at burnout. And then it just kind of cruises along without any engines. It's aerodynamically stabilized by the fins and it spins up through those fins. But it basically flies on a ballistic trajectory. After about 67 seconds, it separates the fairing, drops the stage, and begins to adjust its attitude so that it can get ready for the orbit insertion. And by the three-minute mark, it's reached 180 kilometers. The velocity has dropped to one kilometer per second. That's when the stage two fires. It burns for about 24 seconds, raising the velocity to three and a half kilometers per second. And then there's another 30 second coast as they let the second stage properly burn out. It's then separated, stage three fires, and bang, that brings them up to 8.1 kilometers per second in an orbit which should be about 180 kilometers at the low end and maybe about 1500 at apogee. It is a three stage solid rocket design that was originally derived from a sounding rocket, which was a two stage design that would send 150 kilogram payloads up to a thousand kilometers so that they could test them in microgravity for a limited amount of time. Instead of that 150 kilogram payload, a third stage is added. They also added attitude control hardware, which was suitable for getting them into orbit. And this isn't the first time they attempted to launch this. Back in January 2017, they also attempted to launch Tricom 1. And what happened was 20 seconds into the launch, they lost telemetry from the vehicle. And so they never sent the signal to tell it to actually begin the orbital insertion. So the thing went up and then just came back down. The investigation team took a look at it and decided that the most likely problem was where the cables moved from the interior of the rocket to the exterior and uh, they would be kinked up against the outside of the rocket and apparently the vibration and the heating and various other things would just cause the, sh uh, the cables to get damaged and eventually short circuit and that's what happened in this flight. So with this experience and a little more engineering, a year later they were ready to launch. Another thing you might have noticed, by the way, is that this vehicle is placed on its launch system at an angle. So it already takes off pointing eastwards and the natural gravity turn pulls it over a bit. But this thing accelerates so fast, it basically pops up above the atmosphere, makes a 90 degree turn and then burns downrange to get up to orbital velocity. In that respect, it's actually very much like a lot of Kerbal Space Program launches, where the orbital velocity is so much lower, you tend to pop yourself out of the atmosphere and then circularize. Whereas real rockets with lower thrust to mass ratios don't tend to do that. Anyway, the payload did make it to orbit. Tricom 1R, which was basically the backup model that probably sat in storage for a year. There it is, 
tiny. It's a 3U CubeSat, weighs about 4 kilograms. And at the press conference, they announced that its name, its nickname would be Tasuki. The final orbit they ended up in was actually slightly higher than they expected, with an apogee of over 2,000 kilometers and a perigee of about 180, and of course an inclination of about 30 degrees. I have, however, heard that they've had some issues communicating with it, but it's going to be in orbit for a while, so hopefully they'll figure that out. Regardless, you know, congratulations to the team. This was, you know, a great achievement. This is the smallest launch vehicle now by a significant margin. And the launch vehicle in second place is the Lambda 4S, which is also Japanese. As of right now, it does appear that this is going to be a one-off. It is not really that practical. It was more an exercise in showing how small things could be and uh, demonstrating, yes, that really small launchers are actually technically possible, even if they are not economically viable. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs> <laughs>